Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Yep, we have ourselves a real-world camera test. I'm finally getting this one out there on this right here. This is the LG Velvet. Nice and shiny and uh, kind of mucked up with my fingerprints. I'll fix that in a second. So just to alert all of you, I do already have a full review of this phone over on Pocket Now. It's the more traditional review, but I am still going to be doing my main content here on JV using the real-world camera test, and then of course, my top five complaints and takeaways as my final piece of coverage. But you know what? There might be some other things that we want to talk about here because as I allude to during this visit to the Huntington Library Gardens, uh, the library portions, all the different exhibit halls are closed, of course. Uh, we were outdoors in the Huntington Gardens and I alluded to a piece of news that I will let you know a little bit later in the video. But I do just want to remind everyone to follow me on social media. I am at JVTechT on Instagram and Twitter, especially over on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff over the next couple of months and I'll do my best to post up pictures and selfies and camera samples across my Instagram in particular, so make sure you follow me there. You know, I honestly don't get this whole like debate over wearing a mask. If you get the right one, you look like a freaking ninja. Just get over yourselves. So while we get into the first pictures from the Huntington Gardens, or the H as us members call it, yes I am finally a member there, it's really nice to be able to go to that area because not only is it controlled in terms of how many people are in, uh, they also have very strict rules about entry which include masks on the entire time and they screen everybody uh, with temperature checks and whatnot before you go in. Quick reminder for what cameras we're working with here. We have a 48 megapixel main sensor. We also have an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. That's what you get on the rear. On the flip side, the front facing camera is a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Yep, right off the bat, I was already using the dual screen case as a way of getting just that tiny little bit of distance. It is still a sharp lens. It does put out some pretty good looking selfies, which you can then enhance with things like a beauty mode or even that portrait mode. Of course, one of the more significant bummers about this camera and I, I get it i might be a little bit harsh on this camera because i'm expecting certain features that i've been used to from other lg devices but yeah we still get a wide angle on the back it's an 8 megapixel wide angle which means somehow that it's not able to do 4k video recording so that's a little bit of a disappointment i actually have to go into the camera settings change the full hd that way i can even access the wide angle when it comes to the video mode another cool thing about the dual screen case uh, use it as a stand. Oh, see, this is why you want a wider lens on the front. One of the benefits to having a dual screen case like this is that you can fold it back on itself and like you can see here, I just put it in my mom's hands and I just told her when to hit the shutter button, but I was able to figure out when I was in the right uh, frame, or rather my framing was right. I don't know if I really got it perfectly right, but it's good that I'm able to at least get a ballpark look at what my photo will look like. Of course, one of the funny things in this situation is that we're all wearing face masks, so portrait mode is harder to use on here. Then again, there are a lot of statues around here and the camera still recognizes the faces of the statues for the portrait mode. So here's a look at that. It was a super sunny day out and with those kinds of conditions, pretty much any camera would do a good job and that is what we're seeing here. If I had to levy any criticisms on just the raw picture samples from that particular day, well, it's just that there could be a little bit more color or saturation in these photos. Overall though, uh, I was able to get some good looking photos even with the 8 megapixel ultra wide uh, because the conditions were ripe for it. And because of these conditions, you have the sun bearing down so much that you might have some trouble with the dynamic range, but it HDR turned on in pretty much most of the photos that I was taking here.
Oh, and you might notice that I was wearing a chest sling, uh, one that is made for cameras, but in my case, I was carrying not only the LG Velvet, but also my main daily driver device and the Sony ZV-1, which you're seeing me use right now. I am continuing to use the Sony ZV-1 as much as I can, uh, especially in those really bright conditions, things like the built-in ND filter really helped out in getting some of this extra B-roll footage. Not to mention it has certain modes for videos like this for product videos. So you have the product showcase mode, which allows me to get a nice shot of the LG Velvet just like this with the autofocus working beautifully. Future content on the ZV-1 still on the way. I just might get straight into my top five complaints with this little camera after having used it for a few different videos so far on both JV and Pocket Now. So you might expect that I'll have a little bit of disappointment for this camera package on the LG Velvet. And in a way I do, but I also have to make sure I temper my understanding of what the Velvet's trying to bring to the table. As I mentioned in my Pocket Now review, and I will mention in my top five takeaways, this phone is all about style and general performance on the daily. It provides a number of specifications that actually make it a great and more affordable device than most flagships in the market today. Which means that I can actually share a piece of news with you. We don't know when the phone is actually going to be coming out here in the US, but it is. And I have been told that it is not actually going to come in at the price of $750 US when converted from Korean won. It will be at least $100 less from there. So that actually makes this really exciting, especially for those of you out there that might not be crazy shutter bugs or are looking for the best creative tool in your smartphone. This is still one of the most stylish phones that we've had here in 2020. And if you get it with something like the great dual screen case, well, you have a lot of possibilities there for multitasking, everyday usage and whatnot. And you can get some good shots out of the camera, even if it's not going to be as stellar as some of the flagship releases that we've had this year. It is a little bit of a bummer that the front facing camera is not able to do 4K and it's such a tight frame. The wide angle on the back is a great addition, something LG pioneered, but it's not able to do 4K either. So if you are looking for this to be a great creative tool, maybe it's good for you to look elsewhere. But if you're just looking for a good shooter that will be able to capture some memories from time to time while you use the phone as the kind of affordable productivity powerhouse that it can be, well, the LG Velvet is still a very compelling device. But I will elaborate on those thoughts and plenty of others in my final review of this device here on JV. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Drop some likes on this video at the very least, but also get into the comment sections below. Start some conversations about what you think about the LG Velvet, which is officially on its way to the US for a price that is actually lower than we were projecting. And that's pretty good news. I am going to go ahead and call it on this one, though. Let me know what you think of the LG Velvet in the comments below once again. And until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.